Hey, change it up today. I got it, guys. Hey, every one of you is here for a reason, for a purpose. All right? You're not here by accident. We wanted you here. We brought you here. You have a gift. Bring that gift to the table today, man. Bring it to the table. We talked all week about finishing. Finish every block. Finish every tackle. Finish every play. Finish the damn game. Let's go. Let's go. Fucking go. Three, one, two, three. Fight. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another edition of Viking Spin. I'm your host, Jason. And we're coming at you with a preview of the Vikings and Eagles taking the Vikings back at home, taking on the Eagles in Minnesota. Week six, both teams come into this game with three and two records, uh, both looking to uh, build upon some uh, momentum uh, as both teams got victories uh, in their last games. And uh, so we'll, we'll take a look here at the injury reports and the key matchups and, of course, the keys to a Vikings victory. Um, on the injury report for the Vikings, it's going to be uh, Ben Gideon, uh, the linebacker, and starting right guard Josh Klein are going to be out. And uh, linebacker Kentrell Brothers is questionable. Uh, for the Eagles, uh, starting wide receiver Deshaun Jackson is out. Uh, Darren Sproles, who is the uh, punt returner uh, and backup running back, is out. Uh, another backup running back, Corey Clement, is out. Um, in addition to him, on the defensive side of the ball, uh, they have uh, Tim Jernigan, their starting defensive tackle, is out. Um, they have both starting cornerbacks uh, out, Ronald, both Ronald Darby, and Avante Maddox are out in this game. Um, <clears throat> so uh, the Eagles are going to be uh, quite shorthanded, to say the least. Uh, they have a, a number of injuries uh, on both sides of the ball, uh, which we're going to get into the matchups and why that's going to bode well for the Vikings in the passing game. Um, which, and that's our first matchup. Uh, of course, Stefan Diggs and Adam Thielen. Uh, they're going to be going up against the backup cornerbacks uh, for the Eagles. So that's going to be uh, Sidney Jones, uh, who's coming just, just coming back from a hamstring injury. Um, they also have uh, Razul Douglas and Craig James, uh, who is a former Viking. Um, he was going between our practice squad and the active roster last year, and he was with us in preseason. Uh, Orlando Skandrick is the nickelback. Um, he's a veteran, um, probably the best corner they have out there uh, right now uh, since Jones is just coming back from his injury. Um, so the Vikings are going to have a big opportunity with the Eagles starting corners out. So Diggs and Thielen, uh, especially – in the quick passing game, um, as well as as well as the deep passing game, uh, because the Eagles, as we'll get into here, uh, if you look at their defensive line and the way that they play defense, they play a wide nine technique. They like to, uh, you know, they like to rush the passer with the defensive ends lined out lined up out wide, and uh, they're able to get pressure on the quarterback, uh, which is why you want to use your screen game and your quick passing game. And we saw the Vikings go to that against the Giants last week. They kind of mixed that in um, with their with their play action passes. Uh, so I do expect to see Cousins in the shotgun. Uh, we saw him in the shotgun last year against the St. Eagles defense, and he was getting rid of the ball quickly, uh, hitting Diggs and Thielen on a variety of uh, of short routes, long and intermediate, but the quick game is definitely in there, and you want to establish that, especially early, uh, to get things going and set them up for the deep shots later. Uh, but definitely, um, you know, the, you just for Cousins, he just wants to identify uh, the blitzes that defensive coordinator Jim Schwartz is going to throw at him um, and just know where... <clears throat> where his hot routes are. So that'll be a key. Uh, Dalvin Cook and Alexander Madison 
against the Eagles linebackers, uh, Nigel Bradham and Zach Brown are their two key starters. Um, you know, with the wide nine that the Eagles play, they try to take away the outside zone. So the Vikings could use an inside zone and some traps and some power plays. Some traps when and where you get your guard pulling, your tackle blocks down on Fletcher Cox because um, he's he's your deep, he's their their top defensive tackle, and then you have a guard pull to go out and get the defensive end. That that can open up a hole inside, and that's where teams have had success against the Eagles inside. Uh, they're number one against the run right now. They take away the outside, but teams really haven't run against them. They've been throwing the ball against the Eagles because they don't defend the pass well. Even when they have their starting cornerbacks, they're towards the bottom of the league in pass defense. So definitely I see uh, the quick passing game being a big part of this game, uh, as well as the screens. Getting Dalvin Cook in space against these slower linebackers of Philly will be huge. Um, I expect to see uh, Madison plenty on some inside runs in this game. Uh, if you look at the the matchups with the tight ends against the, uh, the Vikings tight ends against the Eagles safeties, the Eagles safeties might have to play some help over the top or even give some double teams um, on the Vikings wide receivers. And if that's the case, then the tight ends will be open. Uh, you might see some Irv Smith Jr. down the seam in this game. I predict he's going to get his first touchdown catch in this ball game. Uh, Kyle Rudolph can have some opportunities as well. Um, the Eagles are going to play. They've got um, McLeod, Malcolm Jenkins. They're they're pretty good players, but they're going to have their hands full. And of course, they, the Eagles also use uh, Sandejo as a third safety. But you know, like I said, these guys are going to be focused a lot and probably on helping their uh, these weaker cornerbacks, especially on the outsides against Diggs and Thielen. So if their attention is occupied there, the tight ends could have some opportunities for themselves. Uh, it's the Vikings offensive line against the Eagles D-line. Probably the number one guy to watch is Fletcher Cox. They do have some capable edge rushers um, in Barnett and Curry. So you want to you wanna watch for those guys. But the best way to negate that is with a quick passing game. Um, you know, the Vikings do have Brian O'Neill uh, starting in this game, so I think he'll he'll be able to lock down his side. Riley Reef played decently against the Eagles last year. Um, you know, where you where you're most concerned is Dozier um, and Bradbury when it's straight up against Cox. But we'll see if he can take a step if Bradbury can take a step forward this week. But schematically, you know, you're going to have things, like I said, with that wide nine, you're going to have Riley Reef or Brian O'Neill coming down on Cox. And so you can scheme that matchup out of there to get yourself out of a disadvantage. Now, on the defensive side of the ball for the Vikings, our D line against the Philadelphia offensive line, we did get three sacks on them last year of Carson Wentz. Um, and force the fumble. Remember, Linval Joseph had that fumble recovery for a touchdown last year. I know Hunter and Weatherly got sacks. So um, I think we're capable of doing that. Now, Jason Peters didn't play in last year's game, the left tackle for the Eagles, but Everson Griffin didn't play either. So that kind of balances itself out. And I think the rest of the line is who it is. And uh, the Vikings were able to get to have some success last year uh, against these guys in uh, getting to Wentz. Uh, but of course, you know, the key with Wentz is you want to be smart in, in your rush lanes with him. You got to play contain a little bit because he has mobility. Um, out at receiver, uh, even though he doesn't have Deshaun Jackson this week, he still does have all Sean Jeffrey. Uh, he's going to draw Xavier Rhodes, no doubt about it. Uh, I think it's a good matchup for Rhodes. Um, and it's another big physical guy, uh, so that, that matches up well for Xavier Rhodes. Um, I'm thinking uh, when Aguilar is out on the outside, he'll be matched up against Waynes. Inside, they have Mac Hollins. They can use him inside or out. Uh, Hollins is a six foot four receiver. He hasn't done much, but he does have good size. 
probably see some J. Ron Curse in this game, uh, matching up against him from time to time if they put Holland in the slot. Um, and, you know, that's basically Philly's receivers. For tight ends, they have some really good ones. Zach Ertz is probably Wentz's favorite target. Um, Got to watch him. I think Curse will see him some as well. Uh, Anthony Harris will probably uh, match up against him too. Uh, maybe even Eric Wilson at times, uh, since Wilson will be starting in this game in place of getting him. Uh, they also run the two tight end set uh, from time to time. They have Dallas Goddard, and he's a capable pass catcher as well. Uh, so that's something the Vikings <clears throat> secondary will have to be aware of. Uh, I'm sure Mike Zimmer is going to do a lot of uh, blitz and bluff stuff with Harrison Smith to try to cause confusion. Uh, the best thing to do against the RPOs is have your linebackers just stay disciplined, stay in their lanes and gap control, and then let the defensive linemen be the ones that get upfield, but have those linebackers read and react. And I think Zimmer kind of figured that out last year um, where the Viking defense played much better than they did two years ago in the NFC Championship game where they, uh, Peterson had Zimmer's number with the RPO. So I think, um, you know, that's no longer a mystery uh, as in having solved it last year. So it's just basically going to be about lining up and playing and who's going to be able to execute and who's not. Um, you know, the running game for the Eagles, that's an, an, another important aspect to watch. It's Jordan Howard and Miles Sanders, the running back duo. Of course, we know Jordan Howard from the Bears. Uh, he's had success against us in the past, so I'd say he's the number one player on the offense that we have to stop is Howard. Uh, because if you can stop him, and then you can get to the third and longs where our defense really thrives and, and kind of make uh, Wentz one-dimensional. Uh, Miles Sanders is a complement to Howard. He's a uh, faster kind of scat back type um, with more speed and less power. Um, We'll see how many carries he gets. Um, you know, when Howard is in the game as a, as a pass catching threat out of the backfield, he's sure handed, uh, but he's not going to create mismatches because he's not really that fast. His biggest thing is him falling forward in the running game and pushing the pile. So that's the thing. Uh, Linval Joseph and Shamar Stefan, I'm glad they're both healthy because we'll need them up front to help stop the run and keep Kendricks clean so he can make plays. Um, you know, on special teams, Miles Sanders is their kick returner, so you want to be aware of him. Um, you know, we want Baylor to pretty much just boot in the end zone uh, and make sure our coverage teams are disciplined. But I think the Vikings will have an edge in this game with the crowd noise. Um, Wentz likes to make a lot of checks at the line, and that's important to do with the Doug Peterson offense. So if the crowd could be really loud and disruptive, that will affect Wentz and the Eagles. And then, uh, you know, the Vikings have the ball will be quiet. Um, you know, Cousins and company won't have to uh, deal with much crowd noise. So, <clears throat> you know, for the Vikings, I think getting off to a fast start would be uh, a good key to a victory here. Staying balanced on offense, getting a quick passing game going so that you can do different things later on. Uh, just establish that. Um, you know, and, and establish your inside runs as well. So uh, that's all I have for you here today. Um, but that's the way I see it shaking out with the matchups and keys to victory. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments section. And uh, be sure to check us out on Facebook, Twitter, and encourage others to subscribe to our YouTube channel. So long and skull. <laughs>